Hey everyone, welcome to another video. I know I said last time was the last one, but uh, we're going to have another video in the Excel and graphing series. Uh, in, after I made that last video, I realized that there was one topic that I had forgotten to add, uh, and that's about finding the uncertainty in your slope. So right here we have uh, the line of best fit from our last uh, video. Uh, you know, it's a good line of best fit. Looks like it's got a good fit. The problem is I don't know, I don't know how certain I am about this slope. I don't know if it has a high uncertainty or a low uncertainty. Now there is a method to find that, and I'm going to show you how that would work. Let me see. Get this might get stuff going. All right. So I'm going to exaggerate this a little bit. And uh, let's see, draw the error bars. I'm going to extend the size of the error bars and draw them in red. Oh. Draw them in red here. And there's the point right there. And I'm going to do the same thing up here. I'm going to make them a little bigger so you can really see the, these, error, uh, these lines I'm going to make. Now, we have built, based the slope for the line best fit based on where the points actually are. But this point here could actually be anywhere from here to here. And same thing with this one, from here to here. We could actually have a really low slope. This could be up at the top of its error bar, and this point could be at the bottom of its error bar. And that would make a line that would look a little something like this. Draw it. It's going to be weirdly curved, but the best. So you're going to have a line something like that. It would actually be a line, though, not this bobbly thing I have here. And at the same time, you could also have a line where the point is down here and the other point is up here. And that would be a line with a really steep slope. Okay, I had to curve that down a little bit. Whatever. Anyway, you get a line with a really steep slope. Now, these are all curves. Again, they should be straight lines, but I can't draw a straight line. Uh, so what we have there is a line with a low slope. Low slope and a line with a high slope. From those two, I can find the uncertainty in the slope. The uncertainty is equal to the value of the high slope minus the lowest slope, the lower slope lines slope, high slope minus the low slope divided by two. This, by the way, you can use this as a, weather, as a method of calculating uncertainty in a lot of cases. Uh, if, you have, if, you're, if you found an average, you can calculate the uncertainty in that average the same way. Take your highest point that made your average and your lowest point that made your average, find the difference, divide by two. So that's going to give us our uncertainty in the slope. So all we're going to need to do is get some new data that adds or subtracts from this first and last point. And then we're going to have to turn that into new graphs that will sit on top of this one. And I'll show you now how to do that. Okay, so we're back to our, our sheet over here. We have our data again from before. This time I've added an uncertainty um, series right here. And it's some, sorry, some uncertainty data right here. That's what's actually giving us the error bars in the other graph. So what I want to do is make values for the high slope and the low slope. So let's see, we're going to use equals this, equals the first one, equals the last one. This is going to be for a high slope, this is going to be for a low slope. In here, to get the high slope, I want to subtract from my first point. So the formula is equals the value minus its uncertainty. Over here, I want to add the uncertainty. Down here, for the low slope, I want to add the uncertainty for the first point. And I want to subtract the uncertainty for the low point. So for this one, I subtract the uncertainty. 
for this one, I add the uncertainty. That's for the high slope. For the low slope, I add the uncertainty to the first point, and I subtract the uncertainty from the last point. Now that's going to give me new sets of data. What I need to do, though, is add that to the chart. So we're going to go back to the chart, and I'm going to right-click and choose Select Data. Now you can right-click anywhere for this one. Select Data is the, or Select Data Source, is what will tell us what data actually goes in to our, uh, to our chart. And this is actually pretty powerful. We can add more series onto our graph. If you want to have a graph with many different, uh, looking at many different um, uh, runs of data or something like that, you can do that here. So we only need to add two more. One for the high slope. There's two. So one for the high slope. So we're going to add the name. I'm going to type it in here. The x value, I'm going to go back over to the data. x value is there. And the y value for the high slope is here. That's that. And then we hit OK. And we go back here and we see we have these red squares that show the high slope. That's where they are. Then we're going to go back here. Oh, sorry. Actually, we need to go back to the chart. Uh, select data. I'm going to add the new low slope. Low slope. X values. Back again. The distances. And the Y values of the low slope values right here. And then we click OK. So now we have two points. They're the points that make up our low slope and the points that make up our high slope. And at this point, it's just adding a trend line. And there's really no way to make a trend line other than to make a linear line between two points, or a straight line, a linear type. We'll need to display the equation on the chart, but we won't need the r squared value. It will be 1, It's because it's a perfect line. There are only two points. And then we'll do the same again for this one. Uh, oh, there's one other thing we should probably do, and that is to format the trend lines. Uh, it's probably a good idea to make their weight into, or their style, you know, we're going to make them dashed. That will make them, it'll make it a little bit more obvious that we have, uh, we don't have a normal line. It'll make it clear what the actual normal line is. Format the other one. Made some arrows. I think that's weird. Some sort of weird bug there. And then make that a dashed line. So that shows our dashed line here and here. That's the low slope and the high slope lines. And we have our other line in between there. All right. So what's next? Uh, oh, yes. One thing I wanted to do. What we can do. It's kind of interesting here, is you can actually type in here. So I could change this so it's a high slope equation. I could put that somewhere like down here. And I can actually type in here. So I click in it and I try to get my I click out here. I click it and then I wait until my cursor forms that uh, you know, cursor, uh, for my mouse pointer is the sort of eye-shaped thing that usually is when you're trying to put in text. Okay, and there we go. That is it. We have our high slope and our low slope, and we can do our calculation with them, find the difference, and then find the, um, and then half that to find the uncertainty. And that's basically all there is to it. So thanks for watching.